Welcome, welcome. It's the mid-afternoon session, uh, which can mean it's the point of the day that we're experiencing a bit of um, content overload and maybe a bit of an energy slump, but fuel up and strap yourselves in because uh, we're going to the future. We've gathered a collection of wonderful humans uh, and we've got 45 minutes to explore future of work and agency culture. Uh, and this incredible opportunity that we have, we have now to redesign the way we work together to really supercharge our growth. So I'm going to introduce the panel in a moment um, and um, get them to uh, tell us a bit about themselves. But for those of you who don't know me, I'm Nicole Bradford. I'm a partner at Within People uh, and we are a global partnership of growth strategists and we support leaders to really use their culture to drive growth. Um, and what was wonderful this morning, we heard the ever inspiring Sarah Tate uh, with Magnus and Sherilyn discussing what culture is, what it isn't, uh, and how it fuels growth in their agencies. And Sarah spoke about um, how pre-pandemic she led a process for the team at TBWA London to really define their cultural values. Uh, and she explains the cultural values as what we all hold dear. Um, but more explicitly, she talked about the behaviours that the team aligned around to really sort of show up to every day as they work to sort of reverse their fortunes and step into the last few years of really exceptional growth. Uh, and what we heard from Sarah this morning was that it's those values and codified behaviours that really set the team up for success over the last year and helped them navigate the challenges of the last year because they knew what they needed to do to kind of resiliently weather storms together and keep performing. They'd already codified it, so it was already there. Uh, and so they continued to really thrive where others struggled. And it was a really powerful, tangible story about culture, why you codify it and how it drives growth. So without further ado, I'd love to hear from our fantastic panel of experts here this afternoon, Hamish, Helen and Julia. Love to introduce yourselves if possible and tell us a bit about what's been the secret to, to you thriving through the last year. Um, so let's uh, kick off, maybe Julia, I'll come to you first. Yeah, of course. Uh, hello, uh, Julia Franks from uh, Publicist Group UK. I'm the Group Growth Director um, at Publicist Group. Um, and I'm very excited to be here today with uh, this fabulous panel. Uh, I suppose thinking about the question of what's really worked for us um, over the last kind of 12 months, maybe slightly more now as well, um, is I think the ability of our people to be very open-minded and be willing to adapt and everyone having the relationships, uh, the empathy, um, and the drive and the ambition to kind of make it work. Uh, that's been kind of like the, the the most wonderful thing. I think, you know, some of the people that I've met in the last 12 months didn't work for the organization before we went into lockdown, yet I've made some fabulous, you know, friendships with my colleagues. Um, and I think, you know, the tech obviously has been fantastic, but I think it's the people that sit behind the screens um, that has been the foundation that we couldn't have done it without. Um, and I've really, really enjoyed seeing everyone kind of flourish in that way. Super. So really thinking about how we hold on to that open minded, adaptive uh, ways of, of, of being together as we as we move through. Helen, how about you? What's really helped your team thrive? Tell us a bit. Yeah, of course. Hi, um, I'm Helen James. I'm the managing director at CPB in London. So we're a US born agency, Crispin Porter Bogusky, uh, and I lead the team in London. Um, and I also founded Creative Equals Business, which is a female leadership community uh, and program to help more women stay in the creative industries and sort of succeed in the creative industries because we lose too many to maternity leaves and things like that. Um, in terms of the past year, I think there's definitely a theme coming through some of the things Julia talked about. You know, I think some of the things that set us up for a success were just having real clarity around what we are trying to achieve as a team and being quite dogmatic about, you know, consistently sort of talking about that, ensuring that everyone was super clear on sort of what their expectations were and what we needed from them to deliver it. And so therefore everyone sort of on the same team, standing shoulder to shoulder, which I think, you know, Julia sort of talked a little bit about. And I think the other thing that's been, you know, really great for us, and I, I don't think it's anything that we codified necessarily, as Sarah talked about this morning, but I think it's just within our culture, 
is definitely a, a culture of accountability. So we're, we are a small team. We're not a massive agency. We're about 40 people in London. Um, and having an accountable culture where we actually ensure that um, everybody understands what they're delivering to the process, to the work, to the creative output, really did allow us to move into that sort of different way of working um, and achieve success sort of quite quickly and adapt quite quickly. So I think it was those two things sort of that, that have really driven sort of how we got through the last year. Mm, sounds like those 40 people really stepped in and came together. To yes, exactly. Through. Wonderful. And Hamish, tell us a bit about you and your business and what's got you, you guys through. Um, hey there. So, yes, Hamish from Making Moves, standing in a very, very hot phone booth in the office today. Um, yeah, I think the, the, what's really got us through, we actually talked about this quite recently as, as a business. And I think as, as, a, as a company, we've been, you know, I think what we've really um, sort of a, a grown this year is our, as a, our resilience. Um, as a business, you know, working in, in the world of offices over the course of the last year has been a pretty difficult space to, to work in. Um, and I think it's the resilience that's really got us through. I mean, I think sort of just touching on the culture point, you know, again, we, we're as, as a collaborative in our approach to what we do and we enjoy being together to do what we do. So, you know, the fact being trying to do that remotely over the course of sort of nine to 12 months has been really, really challenging. Um, but I think, you know, comparing what we were like as a business, you know, 12 months ago and that sort of a way that we adopted technology is completely different to what where we are now. You know, if, we, we're, as a business, I think we've probably been as creative as you can get with Zoom in terms of, you know, how we've how we've um, sort of kept, collect, kept that collaboration, both from sort of from a business perspective and also from a sort of personal social side. Um, so yeah, we're now a very uh, creative uh, tech business that are uh, very very resilient and looking forward to to getting back into the office on a more regular basis. Mm, wonderful yeah there's been some it's been so surprising hasn't it how how creative we've been able to be over the last year especially with technology but i guess what we're hearing is some really great ingredients to the success over the past year and as we think about sort of redesign redesigning for future growth i think the thing we can all agree on is that it's going to be different and and we've come to value space and place differently how we connect and collaborate differently how we design our lives differently, what we want out of our lives is now quite different. Um, and we've even experienced the way we interact with our clients and pitch and win work is different. And so I'd love to hear a bit about how you're harnessing all that difference and thinking about how you use it now to unleash possibilities for the future in your in your business. So maybe Helen will come to you first and, and, and see what's, what your view is on that probably a couple of sort of themes that have been coming through so the first definitely sort of around um i suppose both in pitching and in sort of a new business perspective i think the differences that were coming through especially at the beginning of the pandemic and you know the fact that we all had a window into into each other's homes that we were being introduced to each other's kids that we were seeing sort of some of the idiosyncrasies that maybe we didn't see before i think really did shine a light on the fact that authenticity is a key point of of growth you know and i think definitely um in in sort of some agency cultures authenticity hasn't necessarily been um a uh a, a sort of a point of view or opinion that's been championed. And I know that's sort of changed over the last few years, but how we can use sort of authenticity, sort of being able to take away the smoke and mirrors, being able to demonstrate, you know, real value through realness and connect as humans has been something that, you know, I think being able to play into differences and being able to understand, you know, those differences, but then also see the similarity, see that we're all going through a very similar situation both in a new business context and also in sort of organic client growth not only are we all facing challenges at home that are very similar we're also you know all having especially at the beginning of last year having to scenario plan recut things reshape things and i think that created a real culture of collaboration both in a client perspective and also in a sort of new business perspective because i was finding myself you know in chemistry meetings in pitch meetings it was a lot closer there was a necessity I suppose through the nature of technology for you to really, really 
analyze and get forensic about things to understand the challenge that was being talked about because you didn't have some of the peripheral things that we all used to take for granted like body language like tone like just the setup of a room that really helped shape sort of the understanding of what that client what that sort of new business prospect was saying so i think that authenticity i think that that definitely everybody talked about way back when um has really helped understand that although there are lots of differences and we need to sort of play into those differences there are lots of things that actually are more we're more similar about as well yeah and there's a lovely thing there about sort of stripping back and stripping things away and coming back to really what's essential yeah yeah realness in in how we show up as human beings totally and i think you know and i don't know if julia agrees but i think it was a real leveler i think it was actually taking away some of that pitch pizzazz and theater that we all used to probably spend a little bit too much time thinking about rather than thinking about the business challenge and the people and what they needed would definitely for for our culture was a real opportunity and something that I, I definitely want to hold on to. Mm, fabulous. And Julia, what are you seeing in, in terms of the different ways your people are looking to to come back to work and, and, and use space and place and, and collaborate? Well, there's for us, there is a, a real excitement around it, actually. Um, we're lucky in the fact that our offices have been open as, as much as they've been able to be and COVID friendly. Um, we have a great health practice who helped us get kind of COVID fit um, and we've got lots of processes in place and it, it is fantastic. I was actually in the office yesterday and I loved it. Um, but that isn't a feeling that everybody has. And I think the, you know, a big learning for us over the last couple of months, um, especially knowing that these dates were coming towards us where, you know, we were going to be able to get together was understanding that the last 12 months have been a real emotional roller coaster for businesses, for teams and for individual people. Um, and understanding that people are on different stages of that roller coaster is something that you have to be really um, aware of and conscious of and just a bit sensitive to, really. Uh, so we've, we've launched something called Heads Up, Heads Down, Head Together, um, which is a guidance, basically, for our people, which is when your head is down, you're doing your desk research, you're just getting on with your job, you can do it one person, you don't need anyone else. Heads Up is you get together and you collaborate, but it can be on tech, it can be on Teams, it can be on Zoom. Um, and Heads Together is actually physical presence is important. And it is actually the one thing that everybody does miss the most. And it is a bit nerving going into the office for that first time, you know, stepping on the tube and thinking, oh, I hope it's not too busy. I hope everyone's wearing their masks, you know, walking through the door again. It's suddenly something that was so normal is very, very different. And but at the same time, it is really exciting. Um, so, you know, I think we need to listen to our people and go, how are you feeling? And be honest with the answers and the information that we're being given and kind of take that on board. I think the last 12 months have been actually, to Helen's point, I completely agree, a real leveller and have actually made us realise the importance of human connections. We are a human industry. Creativity can't be done by robots. And that's what's so wonderful about our industry. And But we do need to get back to some way of connecting in person to help us thrive and to help us grow. And I think that's where business development has got a really exciting time ahead. Mm, thanks, Julia, absolutely. And Hamish, what are you seeing in terms of the way um, people are rethinking and reassessing their space to really think about the opportunities for more of that connection and collaboration when we come back and also how do we acknowledge that people are going to be feeling different in their sort of anxiety and comfort with coming back into the workplace? Yeah, no, it's an interesting one. So I've had the benefit of speaking to a number of businesses to sort of talk about, you know, if they have a lease event coming up and they might actually be moving off the space, it provides a good opportunity for them actually to really rethink their space and, um, and kind of adjust it to how they see themselves working as a business going forward but not only that we're actually working with businesses that are currently in their space um but they're still sort of looking ahead and appreciate that the ways of working are going to be very much different and they're going to have to adjust that space to make it work as hard to kind of yeah optimize what they're getting out of it and the, the message from all the businesses we're working with is, is very similar you know to what helen and julia have been touching on in that um, you know, that whole collaborative element of working from home is just not there. It's just not efficient. It's not effective. And the workplace is, is going to be a key part of um, enabling that collaboration. Um, so that, that um, so what from from an 
workplace workplace perspective, it's in terms of the actual physical space where we're seeing kind of less desks because a lot of that sort of focused working has been is happening at home. And when people are coming into the office, they're using it for meetings, they're using it for collaboration and using it for that social interaction. So kind of we're almost seeing desk moving out and that whole kind of collaborative element of, you know, scrum spaces, collaboration tables, um, building on what sort of breakout social space they've already got into the office and, and kind of bringing, bringing more of that. Um, so, yeah, th those are those are some of the, the main um, physical changes. But I'd be interested to hear a little bit more about, you know, what what Helen and Julia may be getting out of the, the surveys of, from, from their own staff and, you know, are, are you are you guys actually can kind of considering doing anything to to the to your current offices as well? Uh, I'll go first then. Uh, we are, yeah, but again, it's uh, it's one of these things we we don't know the answer at the moment. Um, so we're kind of you know we're opening up the office in phases to understand because also you don't want to be one person on one floor because that'll be mm -hmm. worse than being in your own home. That'll just be really lonely and slightly strange. Um, so you know people want that interaction. So you know slow openings um listening to people actually in the building as well as well as doing regular surveys you know we have been asking people how do you feel a lot of people are worried about the commute actually it's not even really the office space it's the getting mm. there so how does the day change nine till five isn't really going to work particularly well if the tubes are really busy so how could we apply some flexibility to that um how can we therefore make the spaces as you touched on hamish you know, a little bit more um, collaborative um, and a little bit more fluid as well so that we can interchange them as and when needed, because I don't think what works today is going to be the same solution for three months, six months or nine months time. Yeah. Now, I think that's a really important point, actually, and, and something that we're focusing on a lot and is in terms of that whole redesign of the space is that building in that flexibility, because or be you, you might think you know what the answer is for the next six months. It, continuing change is likely so building in flexibility within the design of the space to allow for that for the physical space to flex with whichever direction the business goes is is, is absolutely key as well for sure and for us i think it's interesting hearing julia speak actually because we're probably at the other end of the spectrum in that because we are a smaller team and a smaller setup um obviously covid safe but we're planning a sort of big bang back to the office. So um, rather than sort of getting half the people in, because I my worry is that we've all had a year away from each other and, and we're all really craving culture and craving that interaction. But what we don't want to have is sort of uh, a slow drip back in and then it, it doesn't have that same vibe and it doesn't have that same feeling. And some of the things we're looking at are how do we, number one, sort of market with an occasion to really sort of bring people back together, but ensuring that we're safe and we're lucky we've got quite a big space that we can all be there together and COVID safe if, if we want to. And then ongoing, how do we create this culture of hybrid working, which allows for flexibility, allows for people to choose as and when they have. And Julia, I think I might nick your heads up, heads down, heads, to, heads together, because <laughs> I love it. Um, but how do we create those different modes of working? And then what does our space need to be able to do that? Because as I say, we're lucky enough that we've got a big enough space, but we maybe don't have as many people to ensure that we've got that vibe, that energy, that momentum that I think, you know, agencies very much live on. You know, we need to make sure because so much of what we do happens in the fringes around the outside. It's that it's that conversation on the back of a different creative review that sparks, you know, a different project. So how do we make sure we've got enough interaction at those moments of the right people that are together? To be able to drive that forward while still having the flexibility and the empowerment that i think we've seen over the last year mm, fantastic yeah i mean we're seeing we're seeing leaders all around the world really sort of acknowledge this opportunity of creating cultures and spaces which on a, a sense of belonging create a sense of belonging and a sense of freedom and really acknowledging that for lots of people they have understood a way of working and experienced a way of working that's given them a sense of freedom and, 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 and they're not looking to go back on that now. It's how do we bring everything that which was wonderful about that sense of freedom and knit back into a really coherent sense of belonging to, to, to unlock growth. Um, I'm interested in the sort of rituals you have, uh, Julia, Helen, around belonging and creating that sense of, of, of culture within, within, within your two quite different uh, agencies. Julia, what do you what do you have in terms of, of rituals and artifacts that 
uh, that help you everyone stay connected to culture? Uh, well, Publicist Group um, as a whole, we believe in something called Viva La Difference. Um, it basically enables all of our agencies to have their own independent cultures, but it enables us to click together as and when we need to. We celebrate difference um, and we don't want everyone to be the same. Um, so, you know, you can have Saatchi and Saatchi believing in nothing is impossible, but you can also have um, Digitas being the connected agency and they can collaborate really well together and they you know, work independently very strongly. Um, so for us, it's it's been really important that the agencies communicate with their people and that they feel connected to each other in their teams, um, in their departments and in their agencies, but also that at a group level, they feel that they've got everyone looking out for them in the same way. Um, and I think Magnus touched on it this morning about family. You know, that's kind of what we wanted it to feel like. Um, and actually pitching as well you know this is a community of business development people on this on this whole day you know we're really tenacious people and we're also quite nosy by nature um, <laughs> and you know we like going out and meeting people and hearing about things and doing what and you know and connecting and i think you know it's been those town hall meetings and it's been those pitch kickoffs and kind of small little connections that have built out into bigger passion areas you know, our business resource groups have done some fantastic work over the last 12 months, knitting people together across all of our agencies. Um, and I think, you know, it's the regular communication, going back to Helen's point earlier, the consistent communication, the listening to people, um, and just being really, really sure of what you stand for and what, for us anyway, what everyone else stands for as well and respecting that. Mm, yeah, and a real sense of shared purpose and passion I can hear yeah. through is the thing that's knitting knitting people together. Helen, how about you? What, what's... Well, uh, Julia's gone big and lofty, so I'm going to go right down into the weeds. Right. <laughs> well, I, think, I think there's a few things that we've done on top of some of the stuff that Julia's talked about, and, and I completely agree, you know, communication has been at the heart of everything we've done to be able to knit our team together, to be able to deliver that, that culture and also sort of create consistency. And so I have probably sounded like a broken record at times with my team but I just truly believe that you have to sort of repeat things for people to really sort of get it into their head you know an ex-boss of mine once said you've got to say it 10 times before sort of anyone remembers it so it feels like we're just saying the same thing but actually it needs it needs that to go in so I think we've been sort of operating in a number of different modes in terms of those touch points that moments of connection that really allowed us to work better as a team. So we've been doing things like we do a daily uh, meeting. So this is a stand up meeting, 20 minutes. It's to identify any challenges, to talk about sort of new business things coming in that need to be sort of resourced in places, but it's very tactical. We do a weekly meeting with the agency, which is very much a cultural moment. So we actually have two people chairing it across the agency each week and it's sort of a rolling Rotor, they have to make sure there's a sense of this is what we're, this is the agenda for the agency this week. They have to make sure there's a moment to sort of bring everyone together and showcase any new thinking, new work. But other than that, they can do whatever they want. So one week, uh, a creative team, I might add, decided that it was going to be the shortest meeting in the world. So it's just five minutes. That was it done. Um, and then we do a quarterly uh, meeting. As you can see, it's all Zoom based, but we do a quarterly meeting, which is much more about giving, I suppose, more longer term visibility and oversight to the business. So um, just to really, you know, and I'm really transparent with everyone. These are our numbers. This is the new business pipeline. This is the work that's coming out. And it's much more about making sure everyone feels part of our journey and part of our culture and has as much information as I do without all of the spreadsheets behind it. Um, and then we also do something sort of every six months, which Dave or ECD leads which is a sort of creative showcase. And we've done that in different ways, tried to sort of break up the Zoom a little bit. And I think the next one we're planning to do in a park um, in London, which is talking about not only our creative work, but stuff that we've been jealous of. So we're really, again, sort of demonstrating what good looks like creatively for, for some of our junior teams. Because I think that's the other thing we haven't really talked about, but you know, for the for younger people within agencies and within businesses, I think this last year has been tough. You know, some of them been furloughed, some haven't had maybe the training or the um, mentorship that they would have had if they were sort of in an office or full time and overheard some of those conversations, seen how different people play different scenarios. So we're trying to do a few things, you know, lunch and learn sessions. We do a monthly on sort of best practice social and just updating people there. 
to really make sure that we're also pumping people full of um, value and giving them sort of additional skill set and capability. Mm, it sounds like you, I mean, you've just absolutely made the most of that opportunity that Zoom has provided or, and tech has provided in terms of just more visibility, wonderful different ways of communicating really regularly and helping tell stories in different ways and bring people together in different ways. I'm interested, you know, as we move back now into sort of hybrid ways of working, we've, we've really got used to all being in little boxes and, and, the, and what that's enabled. We've got a big challenge ahead now in terms of how we work with people in the space and people on, you know, still, still working from home. Anything that you're seeing, Hamish, around uh, new ideas that are going to help us as we as we get to that this this quite challenging point over the next year of, of hybrid working? Yeah, I think um, you know a lot a lot of the businesses we're working with are um, are looking to adopt some form of hybrid working. I think you know what. What the pandemics really taught us is that, you know, well, I think whilst there's going to be, there was always going to be a gradual shift towards a more flexible way of working. I think um, COVID certainly fast tracked that, and that it's really brought it to the to the fore, and that that you know, business are having to look at it a lot more closely now. Um, so, kind of born out of that, have been a lot of different platforms around how you can actually manage hybrid working. You know, there's a lot of challenges around, you know, trying to manage how many people are going to be in the office one time. You know, especially when you know, businesses are trying to manage the number of people in at any one point with just being COVID secure and everything that goes with that. But I think as we start to go back into a, you know, normal, hopefully normal way of working in the not too distant future, that it's it's about kind of managing, getting the right teams in at the right time and sort of maximizing everyone's time when they are in the workplace, the right people are there. But I think where that, where, you know, the right people can't be in all at one time this technology is going to play a huge part in terms of facilitating remote workers connecting into what's actually happening in the workplace as well i was actually reading an interesting article um you know typical google like to try and lead from the front on, on these sorts of things and they're trying to adopt a sort of campfire type um sort of meeting facility where everyone sits around uh, a fire and effectively the, a camera is the fire um, and for anyone that's not dialed into that meeting, there's actually screens behind the seats. So if that person's not there, their face is essentially appearing within that screen. So although they're not physically there, they're still, you know, they're still part of that, what's going on in that meeting. So I think we'll only see sort of technology develop as, as time goes on, um, which would be really interesting to see. Um, but yeah, there's, you know, for, for, for everyone out there looking at different sort of hybrid um platforms we'd be more than happy to sort of share some of the some of the systems that are that are, you know a lot of the businesses we're working with are currently looking to adopt mm. um but it's yeah it's an interesting space for sure yeah absolutely and yeah i'm totally um seeing the fireside chat blankets fireside songs little yeah can we, just, can we bring a, a whiskey around the fire and, <laughs> and all sit together? Uh, it's Sounds be, ideal, doesn't it? Yeah, doesn't it? It's going to be fascinating to see how, how that uh, is, is going to be really enabled by innovative tech. Um, I think so much of what you're all talking to is, is really the sort of the importance of, of leadership through this time. There's, 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 there's such an enormous amount of change. And it's so wonderful to hear you all talk about it from a point of positivity and possibility and being really excited about the challenge but it is going to require the very best of, of of us as leaders isn't it to kind of um navigate in terms of like the whole the whole hybrid um working there's a sort of element of what the staff want to have and um and what they need for, from from the, the kind of the way their preferred way of working kind of going forward and then there's an element of you know what the leadership team want and how how much interaction they want from the staff to be in a physical workplace together and working together and then how much they can sort of allow for you know the staff to get from their working from home time and and all the benefits that that brings as well so um there, there's a there's a definite sort of blend of what i think or compromise that sort of needs to be had because there might be slightly more extreme views in some businesses and less so in others. And I think there's a there's a real um, yeah responsibility on on the leadership team to strike the right balance there. I don't I don't know if from sort of the surveys that you've run internally, Helen and Julia, you know what the sort 
outcome or the feedback is from from the staff and say like how much they want to be back in the office or how much they want to work from home and is, is there is there any sort of drastic difference in terms of what what the leadership team thinks um, I mean, I think, you know, like like everybody, the, you know, there's a massive theme that flexibility has been an incredible benefit of the last year and everybody wants to hold on to that. So what we're hearing is that, you know, people do want flexibility. Interestingly, it depends on who you talk to within the business as to where they want to be. Like some of our 20 yeah. year old creatives, camp managers want to be in the office more because that's what they signed up to and they really thrive off that energy and that feeling. And then other people sort of want more, more flexibility. So I think it's going to be a range across it. And I think, you know, to your point, Hamish, what we're trying to do is really understand that really deeply before we actually implement any permanent policies. We, you know, everyone's in a period of learning. We're trying to sort of adapt, see what we learn. And then I, I've been very transparent with the agency and said, we will probably get a few things wrong. And if we do, don't worry, we're going to scrap that. And then we're going to try something else. And we, we need to make sure we're connected, that the business is thriving um, and that everyone feels in a sort of happy sort of working environment. So uh, I think it's going to be very much a case of test, learn and optimise, as with a lot of things in the creative industries nowadays. I think the other thing, Nicole, oh. talking a little bit about was, I suppose, leadership. And I know, you know, from my point of view, and Julia, I'd love your feelings on it, but... Flexibility is definitely one thing we've heard, but I think the flip side of flexibility and the thing that me as a leader would say to sort of my team have been encouraging is really sort of what what other attributes come with that. And for me, sort of flexibility comes with the need for an empowered team and the need for sort of, I suppose, real accountability. And so that's some things that we've been sort of trying to encourage within CPB, just trying to get that flexibility, but also that comes with you know, being accountable for your workload, making sure that you can really sort of deliver against it and being empowered to make the right decisions at the right time to pull the right people in. I don't know, Julia, how, how that's been sort of perceived and playing out at a bigger agency like Publicis. Uh, well, it's, it's kind of been the same. I mean, it's been, it's very hard to kind of, one brush stroke isn't going to work across the one agency or even one client team or, you know, let alone, the organization that is publicist group with many 21 agencies within it um but what i think i completely agree with you you need to be accountable but i think that's where it comes down to the people and that's where it comes down to everyone understanding and having empathy with each other um and understanding that you know we need to kind of and i think at the beginning of the of the lockdown last year the entire industry and the entire world did a very very good job of suddenly pivoting to another way of working like we kind of proved we surprised ourselves really if you think back you would never ever would have seen it coming and the fact that there was a couple of weeks of blip where people didn't quite know what to do but suddenly the tech was working and we figured out how to do presentations on screen and we figured out how to you know engage better in these kind of spaces um i think i've just seen a question actually coming in saying um it's tricky to manage what is tricky uh, is how to manage the blended meetings with both people present and those zooming in there's nothing worse than a disjointed meet meeting and people feeling alienated and i kind of completely agree with that it is really really hard work but it comes back to what you're just saying then you know we we need to respect the people that aren't necessarily in the room and we need to respect the fact that they still have a voice even if they're not physically present even if they're on a screen and it's just changed the way we interact with each other but, you know, ideas and voices need to be heard and listened to and respected. Um, and we all need to understand that all together we will move forward um, and that we all need to kind of lean on each other and support each other. Um, I think just going back specifically to that question, I, I think it also comes back to I'm a I do like process. And I do think at times, you know, I'm a new business person. You have to have a process. <laughs> but I think at times you do need especially when you have people in and out of the office, you do need to make sure that everyone's voices are heard. You do need to go physically around a room and go, have you had your opportunity to speak? Um, it's, and also I think you need to ask people, how did that meeting go? And mm. you need to answer honestly and say, actually, I felt really, I, I felt like I wasn't being listened to and it was horrible watching you converse like this instead of staring at the screen. And I do think that hybrid is hard, but we will get there. Um, and I think that's where tech, like you talked about, Hamish, is going to be really interesting because that is that's where we're going to. How how do we make that more real um, when it's real life when it's not real life? 
Are there, Hamish, you talked a bit about the, the sort of the tech and almost the sort of tangible things to be done, but are there also cultural things and themes that you've been sort of talking to some of your clients about just around sort of how we manage that hybrid and to some of the points that Julia was talking around, you know, how you make sure people feel included, belong, belonging, even though they might be in two different working environments and sort of maybe not with the team at that time? Um, yeah, it's an, it's, a, it's an interesting one. I think the, the biggest challenge that people have got, going ahead is, is sort of the days of, of, of working. And, um, you know, if you've, if you've got your traditional Monday to Friday week and you ask any business or the staff within a business what their preference of days would be in the office, it tends to be Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. So I think there's going to be... Um, I think there's going to have to be some sort of cultural changes in, in terms of like what the business offers to try and get people back into the workplace on those days that that, ne that aren't necessarily as, as busy as, as, as others. Um, but yeah, we, we haven't we don't get sort of too much visibility into, um, you know, into the into the specific things that businesses are doing in that sense. I mean, I, again, I'm just sort of flip the question back. Is there from the feedback that you're getting internally, are there are there um, is, is is there anything any questions that the, the staff are asking in terms of what they're expecting to to see or to, to almost trying to encourage them to come back into into the office again? <laughs> um, I think some of the things we've touched on in terms of how the working day might shift from that nine to five. Yeah. Um, I think you know to your point, especially for us because we're a smaller team. That's definitely one of the things I've been sort of talking about and thinking about is I don't want to have a Monday and a Friday that nobody's in. It's just ghost town. So how do yeah. we sort of manage that? Um, but I, I sort of come back to all of it as a bit test and learn at the moment. So um, we're still trying to figure out, you know, how do we keep a culture alive when we're in separate places? How do we provide those moments of, for connection? and ensure that we're sort of delivering what everybody needs in a sort of flexible environment. So I don't think by any means we've got the answer at the moment. Yeah. I think it's important as well to remember <clears throat> that it's fun seeing people face to face. Like yeah. one of the things that I miss the most is just going and grabbing a coffee with someone. And those little connections, those little conversations that you have on that coffee are, they open an opportunity, they open a thought, a new idea, a new initiative. You know, you don't get that when you have to schedule a Zoom or you have to kind of just check that someone's free on Teams. Um, so for me, it's that I think that fun aspect is what I personally have missed a lot. Um, and I know that a lot of people that I work with have missed as well. And I think, again, business development is we are a small department in any agency, regardless of the size of the agency. It's a, it's a small one or two or maybe four or five people type size department, but it's always quite small. And therefore, unless you're, and what, therefore, when you're pitching, it's brilliant because you connect into lots of different people, and it's really exciting. You build your relationships, but at the same time, if you don't have that on, or if you've just got that one pitch on at the moment, it's it's there's quite a lot of tunnel vision happening. You know, you don't get to reach up and reach out and yeah. bounce ideas off other people and just have that conversation. And that's something that people are saying. You know, they they want to come in and they want to they want to get a bit of fun back in the day. So. I think we've got Nicole back again. Yes, we have. Thank we you. Have. What an epic tech fail that was. I'm so sorry, but I heard you doing brilliantly. And so <laughs> thank you for I'm so sorry. Um, so yes, yeah, so we've just got five minutes left. And I was just wondering uh, whether we could bring things together into sort of some, some top tips that we would pass on to our fellow leaders, like recognizing that this is really a time for sort of generosity and sharing our insight and learning so that we can help each other through this time. What are the sort of top tips that we've got for other leaders who are at this very moment thinking, how do I start to redesign, rethink uh, and, and move forward um, to, to, to make the most of this opportunity? So I'd love to go around and just hear, like what, what, what are the tips that, you, that you'd share? Um, so Helen, maybe come to you. So I think um, definitely sort of culture being king. And I think for a long time, agencies have thought about culture or maybe talked about culture as this fuzzy thing that, you know, it's a ping pong table and a bean bag. And I think, you know, culture needs to be as critically important as sort of the, the business strategy or new, your new business strategy, because that is what's going to sort of drive everything. So I think definitely sort of culture being top of the list. Secondly, and we've talked about it a lot on this, but communication, so consistent, clear communication, so everybody feels involved, 
they feel like they're truly on the same path and it's transparent and it, you know you feel shoulder to shoulder with your peers no matter where you sit in, in the business and then I think the third thing for me and we've sort of touched on this a little bit is really investing time up front into things like as Julia talked about process and and I think it sometimes doesn't come naturally for agency folk especially at some agencies where there's a bit of a um, culture of chaos that is sort of championed and celebrated and held as this well it's creative so therefore we shouldn't have a process it just should go everywhere and I think with this new hybrid way of working with the way of working over the last year being super clear on the process that you're going to follow the roles, responsibilities, the expectation of your team will just mean that you're set up for success. So I think for me, that would be an important part of it. Mm, wonderful, Helen. There's that beautiful balance, isn't there, between understanding the structure and the behaviours that come together to really supercharge culture uh, and both of those things as important. Julia, what top tips have you got for other leaders navigating this time? Um, well, Again, unfortunately, Helen and I are very much obviously on the same page. I think communication is key, but it's it's listening and acting on that as well. I mean, I think communication can't just be one way. It has to be two way. And there has to be an acknowledgement on both sides that whatever it is that we're working to at the moment is a flexible solution to a long term solve. Um, I don't think it's going to get solved overnight. And I think everybody needs to go in quite open and honest thinking, I know that it won't be working right now, but I'm willing to give it a go um, and see how they feel about it. Um, I think people need to be honest with themselves and ask their people to be really honest as well. Because again, I just think that it we're not gonna know how people really truly feel until we start to get into a bit of a groove and see how things are going. Um, and yeah, it is, it, it, culture's really important. I think you need to say to people, what do, what do you miss, what do you want, who, you know, we are, an, we are an agency and we are proud and we want to go out together. And if that's what you're bought into and that's our industry, then how do, how do we all work together to get to that soul? And only by agencies coming together and those cultures being really strong and people understanding how they fit, um, well, I think we get that. Mm, absolutely, which is what this day is about. But it sounds like the things that you're really focusing on, you, you checked in at the beginning with that sense of it's the open minded and adaptiveness of our people. And that feels like it's the thread that's coming really through. We don't have all the answers. We're not going to have all the answers. This is a time for being adaptable, flexible, iterating, testing. And that requires us to be honest and, 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 and sort of super tuned in to, to what we're hearing. And I love the fact that it's not just about listening, it's really acting on that as well, so taking that and acting on it. Hamish, how about you? What 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 are, what are you what top tips yeah. you got for leaders? Yeah, so I think we're kind of all three of us are on a similar page and to a certain degree. And I think the way that I would split it down is into sort of three stages. And stage one of that of a process is kind of utilizing the time now to sort of ask the right questions, collect collect the right data, sort of uh, in an ideal world, you would have already sort of done this and you you might start to develop even one or two or three sets of data, which you can start to not only look at the data you're getting each time, but then compare each sets of data to try and identify trends and what staff are thinking and, and what, lead, what the leadership team are thinking, which would hopefully inform what the strategy is going forward. I think once you once you take that data and you communicate it back to the staff and, and sort of setting out what processes you're going to follow in terms of like getting back into a workplace, new new ways of working, hybrid ways of working and everything that goes with that. Hopefully you've got sufficient data to kind of develop a good strategy, which hopefully won't need too much tweaking. But I think state, stage three of that process is, is about sort of trialing it and, and being um, uh, sort of, yeah, be accepting that you might have to kind of continue to keep adapting. Um, but like I say, yeah, the more the more I think you spend on more time you spend now trying to develop that strategy using some some proper data, hopefully it'll sort of mitigate the, the need for adapting too much further down the line. Mm, and a really lovely call for leaders to use this time intentionally to really yeah. gather the data, listen and hear. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much, all of you, for sharing so generously your, your experience and insights. So sorry for the epic tech fail. Um, <laughs> wonderful to, to spend this time with you. Hopefully people have found that super useful. I'm sure they will. Um, and we now get to introduce Kevin Allen, who's coming up next, that he's going to obviously generously share his insights as well and, and come forward onto the stage. 
So we're going to welcome um, Kevin and say goodbye from us. Thank you.